20 to 8, you're watching Morning Live. We're taking a look at something that's quite prevalent in South Africa. Now, a recent article has uh, revealed that 76% of teenagers want HIV tests at school. The University of Limpopo students is Pure Madiba and uh, Matilda Mohatle conducted that study with about 3,000 pupils between grades at 10 and 12. Now, this came after the education minister in the past has denounced proposals for the testing of teenagers at schools. Here to help Help us uh, put these figures into perspective now is Professor Francois Fenter, uh, the Deputy Director of the Witz Reproductive Health and HIV Institute. Uh, Professor, welcome to you. Thank you so much for joining Hi. us. Prof, let's perhaps begin by asking whether or not this test or the study can be assumed to be representative of all teenagers in South Africa to reflect their opinions on HIV testing. It is a rather small sample, if you think of it that way. It was limited to Limpopo. It was limited to a rural province, to a, sp a specific age demographic and specific, you know, the country varies quite dramatically. My sense is, though, that this is probably true across the country. Teenagers are naturally interested in sex. They naturally they know that they're at risk for a whole range of, of, of conditions. And they, I think uh, it would be silly to walk into any school and say, would you like something and for them to turn around and say no, particularly when it affects the people around them so, so dramatically. Mm. I think as South Africans, we can be so controversial at times as well. Conservative is the way I, I d describe us. We'd much rather bury our heads in the sand, uh, pretend that it's not happening. It'll go away. Our kids are not having sex. The fact is they are. So is it a good or a bad thing that they want HIV testing? I think it's a really good thing. And I think it's indicative of the failure of the education system and of the parenting systems in this country that the children are not being offered things to protect them. We know that South African young, particularly young girls, are incredibly high rates of HIV. Almost half of them have HIV by the age of 21. Uh, a third of them have the age, HIV by the, by the age of 21. A huge percentage of them are pregnant during their, their adolescent years, often at school. And I think that it's, it's indicative of a sexually active population. We know that people start becoming sexually active on average around the ages of 15 to 17. Why are we not trying to protect our children? And again, I think that the education department, by allowing school boards to have decisions on these things, to, to override, you know, to allow parents to simply say, my little darling is not having sex, you know, we're not doing anybody any favors here by sticking our heads in the sand, as mm. you say. There have been a number of initiatives, such as Zazi, uh, Stum Talk, Round Breakers, uh, Love Life, etc., that promote the usage of condoms. And yet youngsters are not using condoms when they're having sexual relations. Why is that? Because you have to often go and get condoms from a health facility. If the condoms were available in the schools, freely available, along with contraception, along with sensible sexual advice, then hopefully things would be improved. But again, it's this bizarre situation where during the time when our, our children are the most vulnerable for HIV, for pregnancy, for sexually transmitted diseases, that's the time when we won't allow them to have access to the things that are most likely to protect them. And these, you can see from this excellent research that, if, because the rest of the research should demonstrate that the majority of them were sexually active, that they wanted information about this. But what is happening is that, uh, honestly, I think is that we're almost abdicating responsibility for, for providing what should be a broader education and protecting them. But shouldn't it begin at home? It should begin at home. I think parents are uncomfortable with that discussion. I think we all know, you know that it's not a discussion we had with our parents, which was a comfortable one at all. So I do think that there's a two-pronged approach. Parents should be taking responsibility, but they clearly are battling with this. And the education system must pick up the slack. Um, it, again, it's ridiculous that children can go through high school, they become sexually active, they're at risk, the lucky ones who actually get to university who haven't fallen pregnant, then are, you know, can have access to this full range of services at the university level, but, which is a month apart from leaving high school to actually entering into university. It doesn't make sense. Mm. Advocating for tests, HIV tests, for uh, contraception to be freely made available at schools, isn't that giving children carte blanche and then sort of giving them a stamp of approval? We accept that you're having sex. Go ahead and do it. So that, I think, is a legitimate fear, but there is decades of research on, in other countries, as well as in this country, to demonstrate that that's not the case. When you make contraception available, there's not more unsafe, um, th th there's not more unwanted pregnancies, there's less. I think that people need to get with the 21st century and just start understanding that giving people information that will allow them to make good choices rather than bad choices. The other thing I think that's missing at schools is people need to start talking about relationships, um, you know, good quality relationships so that girls in particular can start making better choices that allow, allow them to, to, to deal with re in reality with things like gender violence. And finally, both boys and girls need to be taught about sex for pleasure. 
you know, the other thing is that the schools are obsessed with you need to understand sex for reproduction as a mechanism for contracting an STD. If they start from the point of perspective of we, this is why people really have sex and the vast majority of sex is not about having children, then I think we'd be making a little bit of progress. But again, it's, it's an uncomfortable topic, but people, and particularly our politicians, need to be a little bit braver about this. Mm. Don't you think that perhaps the education department in South Africa is already overburdened with uh, the basics, supplying textbooks, making sure that we have uh, adequate school facilities and not a mud house or mud infrastructure? Uh, do you think that adding on to them this added responsibility uh, will not just make the system crumble? No, because I, th I think that Certainly, I think that there is a lot in the education system that does need to be focused on, and that giving to people too many priorities is a bad thing. It doesn't make sense to me that when a third of your learners are leaving school with HIV and a huge percentage of them with, who are pregnant and you know, falling into relationships that are low quality, often characterized by gender violence, that doesn't sound to me like that says to me that that should be front and center of what you're looking at, along, granted, with the textbooks. Um, and we do have the resources in this country to do it. I know that the Department of Health is particularly interested in, in supporting the Department of Education, but they keep running, and we keep running in this, as researchers as well as mm. program activity people, keep running into these school boards and into these schools who just block their doors and say, no, you know, this is immoral, mm. and we won't have this in our school because this is not the kind of school we are. Hmm. We'll have to leave it there for now. I have a feeling it's a discussion that we might uh, come full circle back to again in no time. But thank you so much for having joined us. Professor Francois Fenter is the Deputy Director uh, of the Witz Reproductive Health and HIV Institute. A quick ad break. More